Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Yes, yeah, Saturday morning over here. We've got some hot, hot, actually it's lukewarm, lukewarm news, not breaking news. Yeah, transfer news. Uh, there's also some news in regards to somebody has signed a contract, but that's also not, that's still unconfirmed. I'll just kind of refresh the Arsenal webpage and it's not been officially announced, but this newspaper is saying that a particular winger, yeah, has a sign of contract extension. But we're going to get into this one on the other side of this music intro. Yes, indeed. Uh, good morning to each. Actually, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome uh, back to Canon Fodder TV. I almost went off track there. Uh, welcome back to Canon Fodder TV, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Over here, Saturday morning, over here, over there, it might be I don't know, the afternoon or the evening or probably the night. But yeah, we are back. We are live. And um, there was some um, some action yesterday. I'll get to that in, in just in a little moment. But um, yes, indeedy. Oh my god! You know what? Let's get into this this, this first bit of news. Actually, it's in regards to uh, Moses um, Caicedo. I know, literally, he's been across almost all the platforms. <laughs> like wildfire. But anyway, there's been a new bid: sixty-five million pounds after the star. Yes, uh, Moses um, Caicedo is begging to leave his club, Brighton. Now, can we, let me quickly read this, and I'll give you my thoughts uh, at the end. Now, Arsenal, you know, submitting a new bid for Moses uh, Caicedo, £65 million, after he publicly uh, begged Brighton to let him go. Now, the Seagulls rejected a, what a, would have been a club record of £60 million pounds, uh, plus Vs uh, from the Gunners for the Ecuadorian International just a couple of days ago. Uh, but Arsenal are stepping up their pursuit of a Caicedo by upping the offer by a further five million in what amounts to a huge offer as you look to secure their third January signing before Tuesday's cutoff, actually the deadline. But um, Moses actually is taken to social media and in his own words, he says, I'm grateful to Mr. Bloom and Brighton for giving me the chance to come to play in the Premier League and I feel I've always done my best for them. I always play football with a smile and uh, with my heart. I am the youngest of 10 siblings from a poor upbringing in Santo Domingo, Ecuador. Um, there have been some other reports that he's actually already said goodbye to his teammates. He's already said goodbye. Um, I, I, I'm really not sure how this one is going to go. It appears that Arsenal want the player, but even more so, which is fact, the player has said that he wants to leave Brighton and play for Arsenal. I, 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 there are other reports that he's, he's already said goodbye to his, um, his Brighton teammates. He said his goodbyes. But that's a lot of money, isn't it? But is that not what we wanted? A central defensive midfielder who is Premier League proven. What does that mean, Premier League proven? What, he just plays in the Premier League? But 60, 65, maybe 70 million pounds to prize, yeah, Caicedo away from Brighton, the Seagulls. I was there last week, actually, with the missus, South Coast. Lovely, a bit cold. But uh, yeah, man, the guy, yeah, he says, says there, you know, he says, pleading with Brighton to let him go. The youngest of 10 siblings from a poor upbringing in Santo Domingo, Ecuador. You know, um, it, how can I say this? It is a lot of money. We do want players. I said we want players. We need players. But we want players more than anything else who want to come and play for Arsenal, not only for the money. Not only for the money. So, Moses, can I say, you know, you just have to wait and see what's going to happen there. Uh, but, yeah, quite interesting that he's already told his teammates that he's leaving Brighton. Wants to force a move away from – does he want to force a move away from Brighton? He just wants Brighton to let him go. Let's see how this one gets played out within the next, what, three days, is it? Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday's three days. 
<laughs> Let's see how this one gets played out in the next three days. Yeah, Kaiseido. Oh, my goodness. Anyhow, anyhow. So that's the first um, news segment. No, not, not, not hot, not breaking news, really. I don't want to know I put breaking news there. But um, the, the second uh, news uh, segment, again, still unconfirmed because I tried to find this, this somewhere. I just couldn't see it anywhere. Uh, Gabby Martinelli allegedly uh, has agreed a £180,000 a week deal. Yeah, Arsenal uh, attacker Gabby uh, Martinelli has reportedly agreed to a new long-term contract with the Gunners. Now, according to a report from a particular newspaper, the 21-year-old at Brazilian International is set to sign a deal. So has he signed it? Uh, what's happened? Anyway, that will keep him at the London club at least until summer of 2027. Furthermore, Arsenal will have the option to trigger a, a 12-month extension as, as well. So if if that is true, I'm just going to try to do my maths here, four years. So that will take him still 25. He'll be 25 years of age. Now, Martin, as you know, is still quite young and he's expected to develop further with coaching experience. The Brazilian has all the attributes to, to develop into a world-class tacker. Uh, in the near future. And apart from uh, his quality as a player, Martinelli's ability to slot into the mid multiple attacking uh, roles has been a huge bonus for Arteta and Arsenal. His quality and versatility makes him an asset to the Premier League uh, club. And uh, no surprise, they want to hold on to him for the foreseeable future. But what I am going to say is, what was what is really, really good, is that he has competition. Competition where? Trossard. He needs that, doesn't he? You know, sign the contract, that's fantastic, but let's not let this player just sit and be comfortable in that position there on the left. Yeah, Leandro Trossard, um, for me, I know he got he got subbed off in the game last night against Man City. I would have kept him on. But you could see the difference. When uh, Martin came on, he, he kind of gave an extra dimension to the attack, but we still lost 1-0. Uh, I'll get to that in a moment. But at least, yeah, again, the rumour is that Martin has signed. Has he signed? It doesn't say that. It says that he's he's agreed, but he's not signed yet. I haven't seen no photos yet of him signing the contract. Yeah. Anyway, um, the next new segment, quite worrying for me. I think for me, this is the the storyline uh, of this morning show over here. A Thomas Party injured, injured. Thomas Party was forced from the field at halftime during Arsenal's defeat. <coughs> the hands of, of Man City in the fourth round of the FA Cup uh, last night after picking up an injury. Yeah, Thomas Partey is set to undergo an NRI scan this weekend to assess the severity of the rib injury. Yes, yes, the rib injury he picked up. Uh, the Gunners were beaten 1-0 by uh, Premier League uh, champions uh, as uh, Nathan Aki's goal sent them uh, to the next round, the fourth round. The result was made worse by the injury of Thomas Partey, who was forced uh, from the field at halftime. Partey was replaced by Albert Sam Conga. We're going to get into him in a moment after sustaining a rib injury. Speaking in his post-match press conference, uh, Mikel Arteta explained what happened and what the plan is. Yeah, he felt something, and we didn't want to make, oh, actually taking a risk, uh, so he could not continue, and we took the decision to sub him off. Now, what I wanted to say about this situation here with Thomas Partey getting injured, we have said, actually, we said at the beginning of the season, with a Gabba Jesus, what would to happen if Gabba Jesus were to get injured? Thankfully, some of us have the belief in an Eddie Nketiah. And Eddie Nketiah has been proven a lot of you wrong. Yeah? He's done the business thus far. Now, with Thomas Party, there is no real replacement or additional player who can play in that position there. And that's why I've been saying for the longest time, Arsenal go into the market and buy a central defensive midfielder. Do it. Because what would happen if Thomas Partey got injured? Boom, what happened? He got injured. Now, again, we have to wait and find out what is the severity of his injury. But Arsenal, learn the lesson. Learn the lesson. Let's have players competing for every position across the pitch, including a Thomas Partey. I repeat, including a Thomas Partey. No player can be bigger than, than any one club. doesn't matter whether it's a Man City or a Man United or even at least our club, Arsenal. Now, we have the situation here to get a player or, or two players. We've got three days left. Now, is it going to be the midfielder, you know, Caicedo? I have no idea. Is it going to be Amadou uh, um, Onana? I have no idea. 
but it better be somebody. It has to be somebody. I thought I'd get it off my chest. We've got to learn a lesson. Sorry. Edu, Arteta, have to learn the lesson. Learn. Yeah, it just takes, you know, one injury, you know, and Thomas Party is out. A lot of you say, well, he makes the team work. What happens when he's not there? He can't make the team work. Get a, a reasonable backup for Thomas Party to compete in that position there. Don't let lightning strike twice, please. Anyhow, anyhow, I'm gonna get you know a little bit annoyed on this this Saturday morning over here. Right, um, the next uh, new segment, you know, again, just just on the back, you know, on that Thomas Bardi coming off and Albert Samuel Conga coming on, and I see that your people are giving uh, Albert Samuel Conga a hard time for the game last night. And look, I chose this pose, like you said, what did I do? Albert Sam Lukonga, I'm, your, I'm on your side. But anyway, this new segment, uh, it's a big concern. This is not me saying this. Roy Keane and Ian Wright question Arsenal midfielder Albert Sam Lukonga. Roy Keane and Ian Wright have both criticised Sam Lukonga's performance in Arsenal's uh, defeat, uh, with the former branded and his display a big concern. Listen, not for me. It's not a concern. Now, continuing on this report, it says Lokonga was introduced uh, at the, the break in place of Thomas Party, who injured his ribs. It will undergo a scan today, as we know. But both Roy Keane and Ian Wright felt that he felt he struggled and left far too much space. Now, speaking uh, on ITV Sport after the match, Wright said, it did seem like uh, Julian Alvarez, uh, when you see him there, who's picking him up? Obviously, any striker's worth uh, his salt is going to turn and shoot. I think Jack Reese's vision and capability kept the ball and then noticed Aki. Uh, but look at the moment of space Alvarez is in. Someone has got to be there, it's, uh, whether it's Fabio or Lokonga. Someone has got to be closer. Too much space. Now, focusing on Lokonga, right continue. Uh, with someone like Sambi, he needs minutes. He needs to be playing. He needs to be able to understand and be uh, more wary of where he is and what he needs to do and where he needs to be dropping in or dropping off. Now, what I'm going to say, I mean, part of that, I do agree with Ian Wright. He needs minutes. He needs, that's what he needs. Give the boy minutes so he can know what it feels like to be in press, pressurized situations, to be alert and to be ready. But do I blame him for that goal? that Aki scored. I don't blame him at all. You saw <clears throat> who was the right back? Tommy, Tommy Ashu and Saka getting sucked in. To be honest, if I have to blame someone, I would probably have to say I blame Bakayo Saka. You know, make it difficult for Grealish. You know, be more alert, defend. But we know that Bakayo Saka is not the greatest defender. And I think it's a bit hard on Samuel Lakonga, who that wasn't his man. Aki wasn't his man. Saka was supposed to be marking um, uh, Aki. Yeah, he's he plays on the right-hand side. But I don't want to use the word blame. Okay, but I do not apportion blame to Samuel Lakonga. What Ian Wright is right in saying, what is Ian Wright is right in saying, is that Sam Lakonga needs minutes. You're all complaining about Eddie Nketiah. He's not good enough. You know, he's probably going to be a championship player. Give this guy game time. And I'm not talking about, you know, a bit part there, a few minutes there. Let him start at the beginning. It's the beginning of the game. And it's unfortunate because Thomas Party is like your linchpin. He's not my linchpin. All right? So you want players to come in, and but he's not going to hit the ground running. Because he hasn't been given game time. Give the youngster game time. I think too harsh to apportion blame. Oh, it's Sam Lukonga's fault because, you know, Aki scored a goal. Nah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyhow, again, I don't want to get too annoyed in this one there, but I do not blame Albert Sam Lukonga for that goal there. He's covering the middle. Where, where, did, where does Jack, Green, Jack Greenis, um operate? He operates on the wing. Who's on the wing? Bakayo Saka. Anyway, anyway, I thought I'd get it off my chest. Okay. 
the serene uh, last uh, news segment is in regards to um, Cedric Suarez, who appears to be the next uh, Arsenal player making his way to my second favourite club, uh, Fulham. So Fulham was set to sign uh, Arsenal's um, Cedric Suarez, but only on a loan deal. Fulham expected to, to complete the loan sign of uh, our defender Cedric Suarez this week. Sources have told um, ESPN Sports is in the game. And negotiations have accelerated in recent days, and the two clubs have now agreed in principles a six-month loan deal with no option or obligation to make it a permanent deal would be sufficient. Cedric's Arsenal contract runs until 2024, and his future, <coughs> excuse me, his future uh, will be reviewed uh, then. So, these or those have been the new segments currently running on this Saturday morning over here. Yeah, I covered it inside 15 minutes. Actually, yeah, 16 minutes. Sorry, guys. I just thought I had to get out. You know, I know on our WhatsApp group, Canon 14 WhatsApp group last night, it was like people were what's it, arguing, they were debating about who should have been covering Jack Grealish and why was it Lokonga wasn't there and this, that and the other. I was thinking, well, it was a rich debate. It was a good debate. But I wouldn't want to apportion blame for that to Samuel Conga, absolutely not. But anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. So what I'm going to do now, I need to just quickly check into our Twitter feed and see if there's been any comments there on this uh, this, this this Saturday morning. It's quite chilly outside. I was out early doors doing the shopping. Yeah, well, not with the missus. I left the, the missus at 7 o'clock because she went to work. I thought, you know what, early doors, get up early. Come on, do the shopping, which I did. been doing the washing and do some of our bits and pieces, but uh, we are all good firing on all cylinders. All cylinders. And actually, before I go into uh, our platform on Twitter, I want to say a big thank you to the lads last night on, on the Easy Talk. Yeah, that I tell you what, that hour went so very quick. You know, we had, you know, an ex Arsenal player in Peter Marinello. Actually, I called him a uh, Peter Martinet, didn't I? Yeah, so Peter Marinello and his son, Paul. I'm not sure if you're watching this morning, but thank you again for joining us on Canon Boy TV. And of course, the, the, the H-men, <laughs> not the henchmen, the H-men in Tim Hogan and uh, Terry Hogan. Guys, absolutely wonderful. I couldn't get a word in edgeways because it was just that spectacle there that I thought they had a lot to talk about. And, and we, we enjoyed it. It was good, a hoot. An hour went on, oh, just like that. So what I wanted to say, again, finally, is again, guys, thank you for giving us your time on the Easy Talk last night. I might actually load it up again. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Anyhow, there, there have been no comments thus far on our Twitter feed, I think. Uh, no, there's nothing there. Nothing there. So let me go into the live chat for the first time um, this morning, and let's see who was joining us um, on this uh, show here on a Saturday. So, uh, ever present um, moderator Ashley, good morning to you. Ashley, I hope you're keeping well. This is Hey Up Gunners. Uh, then we've got Scott. Scott, where have you been? Scott. And anyway, welcome back. The price of players is getting a little bit silly. Yes, it is. It is. But it, it's modern day football and it's, um, it is what it is, isn't it? I'm not sure if I'll be paying that amount of money, but we're in a, a weird situation when we've got two signings. But that position there would have been the first position I would have looked at, a central defensive midfielder. But anyway, uh, when I saw the team news, I knew we were uh, not going to win. I said to her, through the game. Do you think so? I don't think we through the game. Uh, it's good, but also 21 uh, with one good season. Stalic is in the house. Okay, we've got two moderators. Hey, Alex, and the, to all gunners here. Thank you for that. I need to remind everyone what likes, like, and subscribe. Well, I say now, you don't have to subscribe. What I would appreciate if you clicked the like button, you know the thumbs up, the emoji, the icon, just click that. You don't have to subscribe. Uh, Scott says, basically, uh, that's his transfer request. He also did not train with the, the team. He's already told his mates that he's leaving. <laughs> I was thinking, okay, where are you going, mate? Are you coming to Arsenal? <laughs> I mean, if I was a player, and I went back with Moses, and he's saying, uh, all right, well, I'm saying my goodbyes. The first question I'll be, I'll be asking is, uh, where are you going? Have you, where are you going, mate? <laughs> Anyhow, come on, Arsenal, uh, please sign uh, Caicedo as soon as possible. 
Yes, Martinelli has signed a new contract. Okay, uh, Tamina, good morning to you. It says, uh, I, so how are you doing? I'm doing fine, actually. A little bit cold because the door is slightly open. We just put the cable out to, yeah, the, the, the dryer. Uh, yeah, but I'm fine. How are you, brother? I hope you're keeping well. Scott says, um, did you see Lakonga walk straight down the, the tunnel and not uh, clap hands? I didn't see that, actually. Um, I was watching the match from my laptop. Uh, and what happened? I got distracted, <laughs> but I didn't see that. I didn't see it. <coughs> uh, he is coming to Arsenal, Caicedo. Uh, uh, Party um, is the glue. He is, but pardon the pun, he came a little bit unstuck. Isn't it? Last season, he came unstuck, getting injured, and he's gotten injured again. So at what point are Arsenal, Edu, and I said, going to wake up and say, but you know what? What happened last season? We didn't get top four. We need to improve the quality in the squad, at least the first team. People bashing for positions in the first team, not just like, just, you know, random casual add-ons. No, we need players, quality players. So let's not make lightning strike twice again and hit us and we don't get, you know, top four again. Go in the market now. Look, we're at the business end now of the window. You know, the, 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 the prices, because they know, literally, you know, clubs are going to be desperate to get players. Arsenal have done relatively well. But come on, come on get it done. Get it done. Uh, Five-year personal uh, uh, terms been agreed uh, with uh, uh, Arsenal. Alex, okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, uh, Lacon Laconga. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, I want him to do well, but he has so so many chances he hides behind players he's not uh it's not harsh it's the truth alex so he, he's he's scared and not ready <coughs> sorry scott I understand what you're saying what you're saying but when we send our children in a big old wide world cannot wrap them up in cotton wool how are they going to experience life if you're ever going to be holding them, protecting them, he has to be shown the bigger world. What, do, what What is his world? It's to be playing games. Uh, otherwise, he's never going to learn, is he? You know, always talk about Eddie Nketiah. You know, it's going by the wayside because he's proven a lot of you wrong. And how is he doing that? Because he's been given game time from beginning right until the end. And I'm saying the same thing for Albert Samuel Conga. What are you thinking, actually, you know, he's probably not ready, or he's hiding behind players. Throw him out there. Of course, give him the equipment, you know, to, to do the thing that he needs to do to, to survive. But he's, he's, it's not going to help his cause if we don't give this guy a game time. It's not going to happen. So I'm on Albert Samuel Conga's side. So much like I was with Eddie and Ketia. Give this guy a game time. And he will prove, I'm sure, a lot of you wrong. And for me, he didn't have like Ian Wright and uh, Rocky the same. A worry, a concern? Not for me. Not for me. Well, Tim is saying yes. So, okay, that's fair enough. That's your opinion. Apparently, Brighton have told Moses to stay away from training until after the transfer window is closed. Uh, will not play against Liverpool. Uh, that he will still be a, a club player. But he, they say that. They say that. You know, clubs say that to kind of ward off and dumb down the player's ambition. But if the price is right, if the price is right, the player and the club will agree. That's what I'm going to say now. Uh, would you get a gel uh, for people? From, oh, of course I would. Without a shadow of a doubt. Now, I was talking about, oh, you know what, actually, the striker, Mitrovic, you know, he's in the business. But for me, this guy it makes the midfield tick. Chow, yes, Paulinho, he makes the midfield in Fulham tick. So, answer the question, will I take him? Of course I would. Of course. But then Fulham might struggle. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he will be cheaper than uh, uh, Caicedo. <clears throat> Uh, yes, he, he needs uh, he needs a loan. Okay, all right. Uh, things are back 
to normal it's having a good old rant <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not ranting you haven't seen anything here remember hit the like button uh, guys and girls uh, to more likes uh, the better the rants Cedric uh, should have uh, had a buy option yeah I was, I'm, I'm surprised at that I'm really surprised that there's not an option to buy hmm, that's, that's, that's quite interesting uh, Anthony uh, this is Master Sanders good morning to you brother hope you keep him well we're not going to sign uh, uh, Caicedo says Christopher why 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 what, what information have you got uh, uh, we will end up with uh, uh, Bam Bam. I don't think so I don't, don't think so Ruben Nevers would be another option to Caicedo also I said that for the longest time his value is dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping yeah Another unheard of a youngster. Uh, take positives uh, from the game. Oh, oh absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to sound defeatist. But when I went to my local uh, corner shop, who's a main night supporter, I didn't find out until after, in there after we won. He told me, all right, get out. But he was joking. Um, he said, oh, but you know what? Arsenal are going to win the Premier League. I said, well, you know what? I'm not sure. He said, why not? I said, two words. Man City. Man City, for me, did not really get out of second gear last night. Now, was it down to Arsenal's lack of threats and literally just... I don't know what Arsenal were doing, but Liverpool, Liverpool, Man United didn't get out of second gear last night. So if there's going to be a possibility that Arsenal might not win the Premier League, it will be because of Man City. Didn't get out of second gear. Did not get out of second gear. I mean, we had a couple of chances... You know, uh, Leandro Trossard had that shot there. Uh, Eddie Kenta had a half, half chance where he should have should have hit the target. But apart from that, I mean, Saka had a quiet game. Didn't defend properly. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I do take positives for that. Now that I've experienced that, and I kind of got the impression that you know Pep was kind of toying with Arsenal. Say, hey, hey, come on, come on, hey, come on, see see how you do with that. Hey, but we're in control. We're in control. But there are positives. Well, I, I thought um, Tina Turner had, had a relatively good game. Uh, uh, I thought, I'll tell you what, so I was looking at Saliba, I was thinking, the guy is cool as a you know cucumber. Under pressure, I was thinking, how do you make that pass? How do you do that? But there are positives. But a few negatives as well. My mic is cracking. So let me lower down the volume there and me thinks. All right, okay. How is that? Okay, we go. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope you're all well. Uh, were you impressed with our Trossard? I thought he looked bright. Uh, he has a great uh, close ball control. I thought he looked really excellent. I was a little bit disappointed he got taken off. But then, again, the quality of Trossard and Martinelli, when Martinelli came on, you could see he gave an additional dimension of threat on the wing. But Trossard, I thought, £27 million, pounds, really? Still off, off the window. Of quality. Left foot, right foot, header. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> Somebody hasn't got the, the cojones to play for Arsenal. Well, that's your opinion. I, I disagree with you. Uh, I, I imagine probably you will say the same thing about Eddie and Ketty as well, Russ. Uh, I do get uh, your point on Sambi. I think France loan would uh, work well. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Is he on his way to arrive at Arsenal? Who are you talking about? Are you talking about um, uh, Caicedo? The Zaha and Zinchenko can play together. Oh, is that is that Xhaka you mean? Xhaka? Zinchenko can play? I, I saw a little bit of old Xhaka, you know, getting caught out you know deep sitting to i don't know he was like on top of the back four I was thinking get up the pitch can't tackle he's a liability when he's like sat on the top top of the back four i was thinking you shouldn't be there get up the pitch shaka i told him uh for me it was man of the match actually I, I didn't even do that last night i didn't do a man of the match um i'm not sure why <laughs> I'm not sure who I'm gonna probably throw it up for um 
I love Saliba. Uh, the point is that uh, lineup uh, last season or season before would have lost uh, five. <clears throat> that's uh, that's way City have. Huh? That's way. I'm not sure. You mean a uh, City have played all season? Not that they didn't uh, get out of uh, gear. They they are stuck in that gear. No, no, Richard. They did not get out of second gear. They didn't. You know, I was thinking, all right. And even when they scored a goal, and when I said about Arsenal, they have got to learn to kill off the game. I mean, when they scored a goal, 10, last 10, 15 minutes, they were just passing the ball around. That is how you kill off the game. They were in second gear, Richard. You didn't have to go into third or fourth gear. Period. And and you say about we would have lost 5-0. A loss, Richard, is a loss. Yeah, lost 1-0, but the loss is a loss. <coughs> Stephen, uh, good morning. Uh, says, uh, if party is not fit for Everton, uh, Xhaka, Zinchenko, and Odegaard can play in the middle, uh, while Tierney uh, play at left back. Yeah. I, I don't like to use the, the expression utility man, but Zinchenko against Man United, he was, I don't know, he was the electricity man, wasn't he? He was all over the place. Uh, left side of midfield, central midfield, almost on the right hand side, the left back. I was thinking, well, where, where, where are you supposed to be? Where are you supposed to be, man? Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. Oh, utility man? No, our electricity man. God, <laughs> there he be. Uh, um, if we play in the Champions League next season, we'd need players of a Champions League experience. Will cost us money, though. Will cost us a lot of money. Uh, Sally Kim says, uh, please sign a Caicedo. Um, the Amazon documentary uh, tell you all you need to know about the Conga mindset. He thinks he deserves to be playing, uh, yet not putting in the miles. Well, he hasn't had the constant opportunities like Eddie Inga, Russ. I mean, the, the sample of Samuel Conga's playing time has been stop start. If you, you were to give this guy a ballpark figure, a frame of 10, 50, or maybe 20 games, then that'll be a fair sample, but he said, stop, start. You know, all of you like to talk about, you know, Thomas Party is a linchpin in the midfield. He hasn't been injured. So where is Sam Conga going to get his, his experience? The sample of Sam Conga is not big enough to say, oh, well, you know what, or the, the document tells you. Listen, there are a lot of players who are probably thinking what Sam Conga said. A lot of the players will be thinking that, but Sam Conga, being inexperienced, he said it. And I thought I'd rather have a player come and tell me what he's thinking than someone thinking in a corner and not saying anything. Uh, good morning, Abdul says, uh, we have to do better things for the second time. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's not um, lightning strike twice, isn't it? Last season we missed out and yeah. Big difference is we are on top of the tree. Uh, right, okay. Zinchenko um, is so passionate. So passionate. Yeah, man. Uh, and Richard says, uh, but we shall see how uh, we are in a couple of days. Do you know what, Richard? We will see what we see at the end of the season. Right? When it's the end of the season, that's when we'll know where we are, you know, what we did and what we didn't do. That is when we're going to know. Not in a couple of days, not in a couple of weeks, not when we've like seen off the end of February or March. At the end of the season, that's when you're going to know. Diane, good morning to you. Sam Conga is not good enough for Arsenal. Truth needs to be told. Uh, that goal, uh, if Aki, uh, he could have um, prevented it by closing him. Uh, but unfortunately, he just, he just stared at him. It's your opinion. <laughs> it's your opinion. All right. Uh, we're going for 35 minutes. 35 minutes now. Uh, whoops, there we go here. Um, give you guys a quick heads up what's going to be happening for the next uh, few days at least. Um, I imagine and believe that the big Sunday show will be back tomorrow. So what time's going to be? I have no idea. <laughs> Paul Bray, or oh, aka the Bray, or in the North Bank, these to with me what time he'll be doing the show, but he'll be back, I'm sure, tomorrow evening. At least he's over here, UK time. And uh, uh, Monday, I'll be back. Um, I think I'm going to be back with a couple of guests. I think. 
Yes, I'm joined by a couple of guests of noteworthiness, and you'll see that trend Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then Thursday will be Thursday Night Football, um, hosted by Ange, first day of Counterpoint TV, and of course, uh, Richard. I think they're expecting a guest of somebody um, joining them uh, for the Thursday, and then we'll be back to Friday. But let's not get to that point yet. All right, so that, so that is it there. Um, let's, let's do a quick review of the news. Um, if you have just joined us, yeah, I see we're just, just um, we're 75 strong, but you're watching me over here talking about news on this uh, Saturday show over here. I haven't done one in, in a long while, actually. Oh, I know why I haven't done one. <laughs> I know why I haven't done one. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. So, uh, up the top of the show, um, this gentleman here, Oops, let me quickly remove this out of the way. Moses Caicedo. I was just thinking, ah, oh, dearie me. Yeah, well, anyway, um, Arsenal are submitted a new bid for Moses Caicedo of £65 million after he, pub he publicly uh, begged Brighton to let him go, according to uh, certain sources. Now, Seagulls rejected uh, what uh, would have been a club record of £60 million. The Gunners are for the Ecuadorian International on Friday. But Arsenal are stepping up their pursuit of Caicedo by upping their, their offer to by five million to make it, of course, sixty five million pounds. Um, but uh, Moses has taken to, to um, social media, and in his own words, he says, "I'm grateful to Mr. Blue and Brighton for giving me the chance to come to the Premier League, and I feel I have all done my best for them. I always uh, play football with, with my smile and with heart. I'm the youngest." 10 siblings from a poor upbringing in Domingo in Ecuador, of course, uh, South America. I've also read um, there's been some comments that he's actually already said goodbye to his teammates. Yeah, he said he said his goodbyes. Now, I'm just thinking at 60, 65 million pounds, are we also going to draw a line in this and say we're not going to go any further than 65 million pounds? Or are we dead set on getting this player over the line? The last few days, three days um, until the transfer, this January transfer window closes. But yeah, Moses uh, Caicedo apparently, allegedly, he's already said goodbye to his teammates. There's also some rumours that um, he's been told by uh, Brighton not to train, you know, stay away, at least until the transfer window closes, uh, dumbing down on his, on his ambitions. But again, like I said, if the money's right, the price is right. He's gone. He is gone. Um, we also spoke in short terms in regards to a, a, a youngster now in Martinelli. Yeah, Martinelli apparently um, he's, he's penned a deal. Uh, he agrees £180,000 a week. That's a lot of money, man. According to a report from a 21-year-old <laughs> Brazilian national, uh, he's already signed a contract. And there is an option to add on 12 months. But this extension takes him up to summer of 2027. As we know, Marcelo is uh, still quite young. He's expected to develop further with coaching experience. The Brazilian has all the attributes to develop into a world-class attacker in the near future. But at least this news here, it's bright news. Yeah, the future is red and white. The future is bright. But Marcelo has signed a contract extension, taking him up to the summer of 2027. Now, a little bit of angst over here. This gentleman, Thomas Party is injured again, was forced off half-time in Arsenal's defeat at the hands of Man City. Uh, as we know, Apple will beat him 1-0 uh, by the Premier League uh, title uh, uh, was last season at the Etihad, and they go through the next round now in the FA Cup. Party was replaced by Albert Samuel after saying a rib injury in the first half. Speaking in his post-match press conference, Mikko Arteta explained that, yeah, he felt something, and we didn't want to take any risks. So we decided um, that he could not continue, and we took him off. Now, some bit of contentious, uh, uh, I'd say, opinions. The gentleman who came on for him, Albert Sam Lakonga. Albert Sam Lakonga, I'm on your side. Roy Keane and Ian Wright explained that they have a big concern over uh, Albert Sam Lakonga's um, experience. But I'm going to go right down to where Ian Wright said, with someone like Sambi, he needs minutes. He needs to be playing. He needs to be able to understand and be more uh, weary of where he is and what he needs to do and where he needs to be dropping in and dropping off. 
Because a lot of you want to blame Samuel Conga. I do not unfortunately blame at the hands of Samuel Conga. I don't know. Is the word blame right? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But what I didn't want to say in regards to the injury of Thomas Party is that Arsenal must learn the lesson of last year, last season. You know, there's stuff about, well, you know, we lost the season because we lost the top four because, you know, Thomas Party got injured. Well, if, that, if that's the case, where is the additional player? Where, why have we not gone into the market a bought player? It's similar ilk. It's similar mindset. They haven't done it. They have not done it. And the last few segments in regards to uh, Cedric Suarez, who seems to be heading to um, Fulham, at least on a loan, uh, six-month loan deal. Um, I am su su surprised why they, they, there is no option uh, to make it permanent. Very, really, really surprised, but it's going to be a loan deal. Um, his common contract uh, runs until 2024. So um, that has been, or these have been a new segment. I can't really repeat it again for the second and last time on this Saturday morning show here on Canon Foy TV. I think what I might do, I might run through these last comments here uh, uh, very quickly, and then we're going to wrap this one up inside an hour, just the way I like it. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> That's not how it goes. That's the way I like it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> oh, dear me, man. Uh, where were we? Where were we? Where were we? Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Well, actually, uh, reminds everyone to all of you for tuning in. Uh, have a great weekend. And remember, smash the like button. Subscribe? Not really. No, just click the like button for us. That that will make um, the community over here a lot more happier. Um, um, yeah, Richard says I think uh, it's a uh, Emerson again. <laughs> uh, it was a team error for not defending properly. Uh, thank thank you for that, uh, Richard. I completely agree. Can't apportion blame to one particular person. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, Zinchenko uh, is just uh, a commander in chief in Arsenal team. He plays uh, uh, confidently as a winner always does and arsenal alex good morning to you good morning yeah just about five minutes ago to midday morning all he says the wonderful stuff over on this channel uh let them uh leave the player to go to play where he wants that says dr artram good morning to you james good morning that says uh, good, good play from the team congratulations but honestly speaking we urgently need a defensive midfielder like Kai i've been saying that for how long James, I've been saying it for how long? But Arsenal, Edu, Arteta, they don't listen to me. They just don't listen to me. And maybe they do. Good morning, sir. Uh, uh, Sammy, I uh, should join under 21s, please. I disagree, but it's your opinion. Uh, Thomas is injured. If we really want our consistency in the top, we really need us to sign a formidable uh, def uh, defensive midfielder. And Scott ended up by saying, uh, have a good day. Uh, Scott, have a wonderful day. I can to say to each and every one of you watching now, um, don't do anything silly. Don't do anything you know that I would do <laughs> that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, and, and I believe we, we have come to an end. I might be back later on this evening, but um, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to carry on doing the house cleaning, the house washing, and make my way to my mama's house. I'm not sure what you're going to do. But whatever you do, you have been listening to Cannon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world.